our New Zealand visa just expired uh, today. So now we're actually not in New Zealand anymore. We are in Australia. We sold our van just before leaving New Zealand. So we said goodbye to that, the red van. <laughs> and um, now we're about to pick up our little, um, our home for the next week and a half, uh, which will be spent in Tasmania. Okay, so we got our van just right here. It's a little guy, nice and compact. Let me give you a quick van tour. You got a couch here, this will turn into a bed. And you got two seats. Got this table that's removable. There's actually another bed in here, but uh, we've, we're basically gonna probably use it for storage and sleep down in, uh, downstairs. And we got the back. Let me turn the light on. Is that it? Whoa, whoa party. Blue light. Why is it blue? Oh, there we go. Okay, got a little stove here. Jocelyn just made some dinner. Got the little sink, a little bit of counter space. It's a little high, but microwave, tiny fridge, and some storage down there. Pretty simple layout, uh, but this will be our home for the next 10 days. So we're looking forward to exploring Tasmania. We got some people that lined up that we're gonna be meeting up with. And right now we're gonna go meet up with a guy named Chris and he was on the show alone and I'm sure most of you know what that show is and uh, I'm a big fan of that show and he was on season one of Australia's alone and I'm looking forward to asking him a bunch of questions about it so stay tuned for that uh, I think it'll be interesting to get some insight on those um, survival shows so uh, first I think we're gonna go hop on his boat all right guys look at this now we're on the water in Tasmania our first mission uh, just straight off the bat and uh, we met up with our friend Chris. Hello, welcome to Tasmania. Yeah, thanks man. No, I'm so stoked to be here. This place looks incredible. Yeah, it is. And like you just seen behind you, you've got some epic coastline. And yeah. I think we'll um, hope to get a nice little bluefin or albacore. But I think mainly we're just going to have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. We have to introduce our smallest friend. Oh, we got a little Hi, guy little too. Billy. Look at little Billy. Hey, Billy. Hey, buddy. He's a good boy. Alright guys, we got a couple rods out there just trolling behind us. See if anything takes it. Look at this place, it's freaking magical. Oh my gosh, these cliffs are awesome. So we did a bit of trolling uh, along those cliffs. Man, what a sight, beautiful. Uh, but no fish, we went around the island and kind of trolled around there too, did a lap and no, no bites. So we just kind of come back into the inlet and now we're gonna go for a quick dive and see what we can find uh, inside the water. All right guys, we are suited up. Water looks nice and clean, good visibility. So let's get in there. As soon as we hopped into the water, Chris spotted this sea urchin. Oh, yeah, that's a oh, it's white. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, there's heaps of different colors. Oh, man, I've never seen a white one. Oh, really? These are the tastiest. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sweet. Here I take a dive down. We're diving quite shallow, only about 10 feet and a uh, terrible camera angle sorry about this but uh, i line up on a fish that was swimming by and and then i absolutely just completely missed it that was a, um, Let him a little too that's a bastard oh, yeah. okay but they're really nice yeah really good to see me yeah oh man <laughs> um 
completely new. But that, I mean, they're not too rare. So yeah. And that black one with the blue, you see that one? Yeah. That's a herring kale, they're not, yeah, as good. But, okay. um, yeah, see those ones? Yeah, for sure. How's this guy? Yeah, they're nice blue throat wrasse. Oh, all right. Pretty good size, so figured I'll take a shot. Got a really good, easy shot on him. That's lovely. There you go. Good job, mate. Yeah. Yeah. What is this one called again? Banded Mullock. Banded Mullock. Nice, too. Yeah, nice. It's a big abalone here. Oh, yeah. I'll show a one out. Oh, That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, cool, man. Let's see, man. Yeah, this should be size. Yeah, we should get like another inch bigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, normally they're like up there. Oh, way in there. But we've got enough fish. Yeah. After that, I started looking at the rocks a bit closer, and soon after, I found this little patch of three abalone. Right there. One, two, and three just off the screen so I pointed out to Chris and he grabbed them off the rocks and that top one was a little too small so he just grabbed the two one two of them below after that I spotted several more abalone but I figured three was going to be enough for us the ocean was providing us with plenty of feed but we want to be respectful and only take what we need, and we headed back to the boat. And on the way back, Chris was able to secure a couple nice crayfish. Nice one. Weird spikes on these uh, trigger fish. We got like weird. You didn't see it when you shot him? No, I Chris shot this one. Oh. I'm excited to take a look at this white urchin. Never seen one this color. It's pretty cool. Good size too. The whole time. Wait, can you see? <laughs> oh yeah, they're huge. They're a bit of a luck of a draw. Sometimes yeah. they're real bright yellow. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it just depends on what stage of the cycle they're at. Yeah. So I don't think, compared to, I don't think that's probably the greatest one it'll taste nice but just due to the texture yeah oh that's interesting look at that how's that one beautiful mate bloody beautiful <laughs> <laughs> let's try that oh yeah much different to what you tried it's a little different yeah pretty sweet it's not very briny i don't think it's like more sweet this one oh that's real good these look different because they look like almost like individual eggs. Yeah, like bro. Or... Yeah, that's interesting, man. That's cool. Even the legs are gonna be so good. And these, like the front, the front legs are huge too. Huh? Yeah, that's got some nice meat in there. Yeah, southern rock lobster. Nice one. Donkey, <laughs> my bloody donkey. Yeah. Still a good one though. Beautiful. And the only yeah. thing we have to um, not worry about is uh, make sure we don't do is if they're female with berries. Oh yeah. Um, 
So this one is a male, right? Yeah, male with a just a single flap either side. Yeah. And the females will have double of them. Double flaps. And sometimes full of berries. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm happy with awesome. that. It's good awesome. to uh, good work, share man. the love, mate. Yeah. Get some Tassie seafood in the bellies. Yeah, that's bloody awesome. As soon as we landed in Tasmania. Uh, we went to some whiskey tastings and wine tastings. It's always a dilemma uh, if I have to get up the early the next morning for fishing, which I do in this case. Let's just face it, we just don't bounce back like we used to. Um, good thing this video is sponsored by Z-Biotics. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. PhD scientists invented it to tackle rough mornings after drinking. The way alcohol works is when you drink it, it gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. And it's this byproduct, not dehydration, that makes you feel miserable the next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break down this byproduct. Just remember to drink Zbiotics as your first drink of the night, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to fill your best tomorrow. I really want to stay sharp and alert for all the early morning fishing, so I'm glad Zbiotics is there and it really helps. Pair your wine and chocolate for Valentine's Day with the Zbiotic. Go to zbiotics.com slash outdoor chef or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use code outdoor chef. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code to stay prepared, whatever the occasion. 100% money back guaranteed, 15% off. zbiotics.com slash outdoor chef. And remember, code outdoor chef at checkout. And thank you to out not to outdoor chef. <laughs> thank you to zbiotics for sponsoring this video. All right, that was a nice day on the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I'll throw it for you one more time. All right. Now we're going to cook some dinner and let's see what we're going to make. We don't have very many ingredients because we, we just got here and then we have that rental van. And we just went to the store and picked up, you know, just essential stuff like pasta and onions and soy sauce. Um, so. I'm gonna make something with the onions and soy sauce. And I was thinking, oh, I have eggs too. So I can make like a oyako dumburi. But instead of chicken, we can replace the chicken with crayfish or the fish, even the abalone. And I think that's what I'll make. I got some rice as well. Just something easy uh, for today. And then we can do, we can cook with it more tomorrow and the day, coming days as well. But I think that's what I'm gonna go for. A little oyako dumburi. Technically, it's not oyako donburi because if you know what oyako means in Japanese, it means uh, parent and child. So that's why it's usually chicken and egg, but we're going to replace the chicken. All right. I always carry my knife bag with me wherever I travel. And man, it comes in so clutch having my own knives traveling. It's just, I need it. I, I, I can't, I can't go back to like the... The, the, the knife that provide they provided us for the van is like terrible <laughs> but luckily I got my knives and my apron just gotta get this on properly I'll switch the mic to my apron I think oh that's pretty good give me the stick there you go let's do this I got my Deva I think I'm gonna use this today too some shears yeah, I usually go from the top, but no, there's no way getting through this skull. It's freaking heavy duty. So I'm gonna dispatch them from the bottom side and uh, should be all good. Thank you, big guy. Nice tasty crayfish. There you go, dispatched. All right, we'll take my knife and just run it under here. This can be, you know what, it's my pocket knife would be better at it. This, because it doesn't need to be all sharp. Oh, that's a nice big tail. Big lost tail. Oh, you see that? The dispatch came right through the top right where I would spike it down from. And if you take this middle fin, kind of just break it apart. You want to twist it in either direction. So we're going to rip it off. And when you rip it off, oh, dang it. 
this right here. Usually when you take that middle fin out in the back tail, it'll come right out with it. But that one broke, broke off. There's another way to do it. If you take one of his antennas, just snap it like that, and you just drive it in there, twist it up, and look at it. That'll come out. Let me just cut that off. And this, you can also break it down a bit further. There we go. You can separate all that. And this is going to be delicious. All that stuff in there. Mmm, yum. And just like a crab, you can take all the gills off here. Just gonna chuck it in the fire. And we'll boil this up too, because these legs are huge. So these legs are gonna have nice meat in them. So I'm just gonna chuck these in just for a quick, uh, quick boil in the, some salt water. And that, that'll firm it up, be able to pull it apart easily. And we'll go from there. There it is guys, just quickly uh, boiled in salt water, just like five minutes real quick. Uh, did that and I'm going to go ahead and just quickly steam the uh, abalone as well. I'm just going to clean it off. This one is still whole. I'm going to chuck this on the bobby and then this one I'll slice it up. I just cleaned off the bottom a bit. I can tell that this muscle break really tensed up so we're going to have to tenderize it a bit. So this is all pretty much still raw. I just tenderize these pieces. Perfect amount of onion. I'm just gonna chuck this in right now. And I'll just use a little butter. All right, let's go take this to the fire. Okay, I'm gonna add a bit of soy sauce. And I'm gonna add a bit of this stock that I cooked the lobster in. And the abalone. We'll bring that to a boil. I will try to remember this handle is going to get hot. <laughs> All right, with the lobster tail, you can either cut it in half or you can take some shears, cut the, cut down the sides. And this will peel right back like that, and you'll be able to take all that meat out. Look at that. Damn, it's chunky. <laughs> That's a lot. And we'll just chunk this up, little bite-sized pieces. You see this is still raw in the middle, completely raw. We're gonna add that in with the abalone. Is there such thing as too much crayfish? I feel like it's gonna be too much. Yeah, oh look at this, what is that in there? This cray's got like a little spine stuck in him. Got stabbed by something? Yeah, like a sea urchin. Oh. Add a bit of sugar in there. Normally you put some mirin in there, but we don't have any. So I'm just going in with the sugar replacement. I need a little bit more stock in there, I think. Perfect. Let's put some of this in there. This is the good stuff. All the flavor, man. I'm gonna just crush it up in here. And then just add it to our sauce. Oh yeah. Let it cook down a little bit in there. Yeah. There's plenty of meat in these antennas. Dude, it's so sharp. <laughs> Look at all the meat in here. I'll just pull it out and eat it. Mm. 
even in these legs. Yeah. Oh, here it comes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's nice. There you go. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, crayfish. Abalone. That's a lot of lobster. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna go directly in here in this hot coals. There you go. A little soy sauce. A little butter. We'll cover that guy up. All right, cracked five eggs in here. Half of this in here for now. Just half. We'll let that set. All right, now I'll pour the rest of the eggs. I had a little taste, the flavor of crayfish. Just, it's just intense. Look at that. We'll just top it off with a little bit more green onion. Yeah. And we'll call it. All right. Here we go. There's just a little, uh, my take on a Japanese uh, oyako donburi. Uh, it's usually made with chicken, chicken and eggs. But I made it with, obviously, with uh, crayfish, crayfish and pala or the abalone. <laughs> abalone. Yeah, black lip abalone. Yeah. Try it, man. All right, excellent. Enjoy. Mm. Jeez, that's good, eh? Yeah, mm. needed that one. Ooh. How'd you tenderize abalone? I didn't see that. So you were just doing with a knife, was it? Mm. Oh, well. Back of the knife? Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I'll normally just um, get like a dive weight. Mm -hmm. So I'll shuck the abalone in, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. and just get the dive weight and just whack it on top. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm a fan. Abalone is so soft. Abalone is soft. Mm -hmm. The taste of the crayfish is very strong, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much eating the whole crayfish, really. Yeah. I like doing this. Can you tell them about um, about your uh, experience on Alone? Yeah, so, what was that? What I say, just under two weeks. And um, down here in the Tassie bush, up on the west coast. So yeah, it was a lot harder than I thought. Um, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was going to be fine. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be fine and lots of possums and wallabies everywhere. And yeah. Almost eating like this every day. But um, <laughs> turns out there was a few spiders I had to eat and lots of little... You were surviving on spiders? Yeah. What? Yeah, I think I ate about six spiders out there and yeah. three trout. Did you? And three trout? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you got, got some fish then. Yeah, got over the 12 days. So I got, you know, a couple of trout and mostly it was just um, edible plants and that little berries and oh yeah and the roots of of you know like little green did shoots you, and that did yeah. you feel hungry the whole time or did it did that go away that sensation it was actually surprisingly i did assume that i'd have like stomach cramps and all that but no i think mentally my my mind just sort of said no nah, it's all good but yeah having those vivid dreams of food and just thinking about pepperoni pizza all the time. Um, so yeah, it was really hard. That was a good challenge. Right. Yeah. Lost a few kgs, which was good. <laughs> mm. How'd you feel after it? Like health-wise, was it fine? That's kind of what I'm scared of, like the after effects of that. Well, Kind of starving yourself. Yeah, a few of us put on a fair bit of weight prior to that. So, mm. you know, I think I'll put on about 13, 14 kilos. And yeah, and yeah I think Gina about 17, 18 kilos. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I lost that 14 kg, so... All of it, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Oh, and yeah. then we had to sort of do a refeeding program and making sure that you don't just get out and eat pizza. It's quite unhealthy to do that, so... Oh, yeah? Yeah, so we're sort of banked up in a house for another week afterwards and trying to eat properly. Mm. But, yes, yeah, so I think the first meal was a little handful of nuts. 
not the pepperoni pizza. Really? So, oh, yeah. man, brutal. Very brutal, yeah. <laughs> brutal, and, a, yeah. and like a Powerade, so. Mm. One time I did a, just like a 48-hour, you know, like a YouTube little survival challenge. Yeah. That's nothing compared to what you've done. Well, I think after, right. mm -hmm. even after, after two nights yeah. is when you really notice the brain shutting down and slowing down. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, just from lack of nutrients. Yeah. So I'd done a five day down on Bruny Island and yeah, with a couple of guys from the Alone Show and mm. we had all these oysters to eat, mm -hmm. but it still wasn't enough to keep our mind actively working. And um, yeah, I think the morning of day three, we were just like, geez, I'd go, to the park, go for a palmy at the pub, you know, just constantly talking about food. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a big thing, we need it. We need fuel yeah. and uh, it changes you mentally very quickly. Wow. Were the spiders any good? Yeah, huntsmen's are actually really good. Oh, yeah. You've got to fry them up, but not too much so the sort of back end is dried out. Mm -hmm. you, you still want the juices. And uh, yeah, so the perfect thing is the legs are crunchy and the, the bum of it is warm juices in the back. <laughs> so yeah, it's actually really good. You find some big huntsmen? Yeah, sort of All that right. size. Oh yeah. Well, I suppose that's Still big. palm size, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you eaten any since? <laughs> I haven't known. Um, it's like craving it. Yeah, but I mean, I, yeah, we're, like, we've got this, so, you know. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a great experience being out there. And How was it prior to leading up to the show? Did you do training like on your own or did they make you do some courses or anything like that? Yeah, I think we had like about a week or so boot camp. Um, you know, you got to learn about all the requirements and how to use cameras and what we can and can't take. And, mm. and it really emphasised on the Tasmanian indigenous, like how they do things or did things in mm. back in the day. So yeah, really wanted to make sure that we did that right. And, yeah. You know, hunting in that sort of style. Yeah. So yeah, so it was a good time to bond with everyone before we left and oh. and learn all these things, yeah. So you knew all the other contestants on there that mm. were participating at the same time? Yep. Yeah, we're all pretty close. Oh yeah. You know, for the seven days prior. Oh. So when we're all cool on day one, see yeah. you later, good luck Gina. And, Good luck, everyone. You know, I think once you get to that point, yeah, you know, very quickly it became not yeah. about a competition. Yeah, it's just like about a personal journey, and and I just felt like I don't need to be here anymore. Yeah, I need to just go home. Yeah. Um. So I was like, well, we'll just do that. Just do what's natural. Tough times out there. Yeah, I bet, man. Yeah. It was the toughest thing like being hungry or being when not, not seeing anybody for mm. that long. Absolutely. I think like being alone. Yeah, um, just the psychological. Yeah, we're very, you know, a lot of us are a lot more introvert than others and mm -hmm. independent and isolated, but to be totally alone yeah. is something that, yeah, I guess I've never experienced and, and maybe a lot haven't. Yeah. But it's also refreshing too, so it's good to get out there and spend that time by yourself. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be a couple of weeks. You can take your own food. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think, I feel like there's a lot of benefits for it. So if somebody watching had an opportunity to go on alone, would you recommend it? Mm, absolutely. Yeah? yeah. But have a good hard think about it. It's <laughs> unless you can take a cow in your back pocket, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. Um yeah. Don't think you can uh, yeah, I've got this, because that's what I thought. So um yeah, really have a good hard think about it. You thought it would be kind of a a breeze. You can get it, you can win it. Yeah, I just didn't know what, I was like, what can go wrong, it's all right. Even if I don't catch anything, I'll just starve for three months, 90 days. I should be able to win it in that time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess, yeah, it's a mental aspect, you know, and I think, you know, so some like Outback Mike, he'd sort of, you know, done 50 day expeditions by himself, solo and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, catching his own food. And, yeah. So yeah, I really think it's something that you should try and, you know, yeah. do a few survival little things and... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and just see how, how you operate with just no food and, and no one around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a mental aspect too, like I was saying about those spiders and, you know, you've, you've caught something again, you can take it back to your camp and yeah. cook it up and yeah. you go through those motions. You yeah. know, and that, even though I got very little nutrients from it, but that was enough. That's something to do rather than just try and get to sleep mm -hmm. not doing that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the spot is a safe around here for the moment. <laughs> so, as long as we keep diving, we'll be right. Today was a fun day. Thank you for taking us out. It was a great day. Was a awesome, great day. Man. Great day underwater. Yeah. What a way to start off our 
Tasmanian Adventures. Yep. Yeah. You guys want to learn more about uh, Alone or see more about Chris? He's got a YouTube channel as well. Tazzy Adventure Man. Tazzy yeah, Adventure yeah. Man. Tazzy. All socials and all that. Facebook, yeah, TikTok. Tazzy. I think we'll sign off on this one. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Cheers. Anyway, if you like the video, make sure that thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>